Hey what's up guys, welcome to Serpros. In this video we're going to be talking about VLAN trunking protocol. So VLAN trunking protocol or VTP for short is a cool little feature that allows your switches to synchronize their VLAN configuration. So just as an example, without VTP, if you wanted to configure a new VLAN, you would need to connect to each individual switch and type it in manually. We only had three switches here, so it's not a big problem, but imagine you have 100 switches and 100 VLANs. That is a lot of work, and we don't want to do that. So instead, with VTP, all we have to do is configure the VLAN on one switch, and the others will synchronize and create the VLAN for us. Easy. Great, so how does this work? Well, each switch will have its own VLAN database, and this database will have what's called a revision number. Each time the database changes, whether you add or remove a VLAN, the revision number will increase by one. The goal here is to have every single switch running the same VLAN database with the same revision number. The way the switches know they have the correct VLAN database is by sending out what's called summary advertisement messages. These are sent out every five minutes by default. It contains the VTP domain name, which we will look at in a minute, the VTP password, which again we will come to in a minute, the revision number, so each switch can compare it to their own database, and the followers field, which indicates whether another message will follow. This is used when updating the database, which we will look at in a second. Now these messages don't include the VLAN information. If there are no changes to the VLANs, it makes no sense to keep sending the same database information over and over again every five minutes. That's just a waste of bandwidth. Instead, these messages just contain the VTP settings and the revision number. So each switch will send out its own summary advertisement and make sure that their database matches the others by comparing the revision numbers. If the switch receives a summary advertisement with a revision number that is the same or less than its own, it will simply ignore the message. If we were to add a new VLAN to switch A, the database revision number will increase by one. Then switch A will send out a summary advertisement with the new revision number. This message will also tell the other switches that an update message will follow. It does this using the followers field that we looked at earlier. So switch A then sends a new type of message to inform the others about the new VLAN. This message is called a subset advertisement. The subset advertisement contains the VTP domain name and also the VLAN information so the other switches can synchronize their databases. Now if there are several VLANs to be added, multiple subset advertisements may need to be sent. Once switch B and C update their VLAN databases, they will also send out a new summary advertisement and subset advertisement. This is to inform any other switches that may be downstream from them. There is also a third message type not shown here, and that is the advertisement request. This is used when the switch is reset, the VTP domain name has changed, or the switch receives a summary advertisement with a higher revision number than its own. These messages allow the switch to request a subset advertisement so it can synchronize its VLAN database. So that's the overview of how VTP works, but there are a few configuration options and requirements. So first let's look at VTP modes. There are three different modes that you can choose from when using VTP. The first one and also the default is server mode. Server mode means the switch can create and send VLAN updates to all other switches. In other words, it serves the other switches. You may choose to only have one or a few server switches to control the rest. The second is client mode. Clients cannot create VLANs. 
they can only update from the server switches. They can, however, send database advertisements and updates to other switches. And the third option is transparent. Transparent switches almost have VTP disabled. They can create their own local VLANs, but do not create or send database updates. It does, however, forward other switch advertisements, but ignores it itself. As far as VTP is concerned, just think of transparent switches as not even being there. They have no impact on the VTP databases, but forward the messages along. Okay, so as always with these types of things, there are some requirements that need to be met before VTP will work. All links must be trunks. No VTP messages will be sent across any access ports. All switches must have the same VTP domain name. The domain name is set so the switches know which messages to listen to and which ones to ignore. You couldn't plug in a switch with a different domain name and start creating VLANs to sync. VTP password. Now unlike the others, the VTP password is completely optional. But if you do set it, then it must match across all switches. So now I'm going to show you the biggest downfall of VTP and why a lot of people swear not to use it at all. Let's bring back our databases. Let's say you unplug one of your switches. Maybe it's being swapped out for an upgrade and you take the old one to do some testing. During your testing, you might start messing around with the VLANs. Let's say you start deleting them. And each time you make a change, the revision number will increase by one. So on this switch, you now have no VLANs and a revision number of 10. What do you think will happen when you plug this switch back into the network? Well, the messages will be sent as we saw earlier and switch A and switch B will realize they have a revision number of seven and the switch C has a revision number of 10. So what happens? They sync their databases and remove all of their VLANs. So now you're in a situation where you have no VLANs across all switches. The switches will not move the interfaces to another available VLAN. They would just stop working. So imagine this for a second. You have VLANs for all VoIP phones, a VLAN for all sales computers, a VLAN for all IT computers. And now all network access has been completely removed just by plugging in this test switch. This is sometimes known as a VTP wipeout. And it's why a lot of people will not use VTP and would rather add their VLANs manually than risk complete chaos by taking out all VLANs. Now this might sound like an extreme example, but it does happen. Trust me, Google it. You're sure to find some horror stories there. So before we go into the configuration, there is one last feature of VTP that I want to go over. This is called VTP pruning. To show you this feature, we have a new network, three switches, but only two of them have a device in VLAN 10. Without VTP pruning, when your first switch receives a broadcast for VLAN 10, it will forward it to the next switch over the trunk. And then that switch will forward it to the VLAN 10 interface. It will also forward it over the trunk to the last switch. But this switch does not have any devices that belong to VLAN 10. So the switch simply ignores the broadcast. Broadcast traffic happens all of the time. So this is a big waste of bandwidth and resources. Instead, VTP pruning can let the switches tell each other which VLANs they have ports for. In this case, the last switch can tell the others to stop sending VLAN 10 traffic. So this time, when the VLAN 10 broadcast is sent, it's sent to the other device, but not to the last switch, saving resources and bandwidth. Again, we only have three switches here, but if you have 100 switches and 100 VLANs, this could save you a huge amount of bandwidth. Okay, so let's go over the configuration. We'll use two switches here to keep it nice and simple. 
This should be pretty quick. We'll open the first switch. We'll type enable. And just before we start, let's run a quick show VTP status command. Now we can see the current status of our VTP settings. Now this is a fresh config, so everything is set as default. This shows a lot of information, but the bits we're interested in is configuration revision. This is our revision number. Because we haven't made any changes, this is set as zero. Number of existing VLANs. This is currently showing the five default VLANs. VTP operating mode. Here you can see which mode the switch is set to. Currently it's set as server by default. VTP domain name. We haven't set anything yet, so this is currently blank. VTP pruning. This shows if pruning is switched on. As you can see, it's off by default. So let's start the configuration. Configure, terminal. If we run VTP question mark, then we can see all of our options. The ones we're interested in here are domain, mode, password, and pruning. We'll first look at the mode. Type VTP mode, and if we do a question mark, you can see the different mode options we looked at earlier. Now we already saw the mode is set as server by default, but if we wanted to set this manually, we would type VTP mode server, and it tells us it's already set. Next, we'll set the VTP domain name by running the command VTP domain, and we'll use the domain name Certbros. As you can see, the switch has now updated the VTP domain name. We'll set a password. This is optional, but it's worth doing. So we do this by typing VTP password, and we'll just use the password Certbros. And now the password has been set. While we're here, we'll also turn on VTP pruning using the command VTP pruning. Nice and simple. It's worth noting, you only need to turn this option on for switches that are set as server mode. As I'm sure you can remember from the requirements, VTP will only work over trunk ports. Now the link between the two switches should have negotiated to become a trunk, but just to be sure, we'll set it manually. Interface Fast Ethernet 01. We'll type switch port, trunk, encapsulation, dot one q so this just ensures that we use dot one q trunking and now switch port mode trunk to set the port into trunk mode so that's it for this switch but we have to do the same on the other so we'll open up our second switch enable configure terminal this time we'll set the switch to client mode by using the command VTP mode client. Remember they must have the same domain name, so we'll type VTP domain Certbros. It's worth noting here, the domain name is caps sensitive. Now we'll set the password, VTP password Certbros. Again, this is cap sensitive. So something to look out for there. Because this switch is set to client mode, we do not need to run the pruning command. This is only done on server switches. But we do need to set the trunk. Interface fast ethernet 01. Switch port, trunk, encapsulation, dot one q. Switch port, mode, trunk. Okay, so that's all configured. Let's try it out. We'll go back to the other switch. We'll log in again. Run a quick show VTP status command. Now we can see the revision number has increased because we configured the VTP settings. We can also see our domain name and that pruning is enabled. 
So to test this, we need to add a new VLAN. So configure terminal and we'll type VLAN 10. And we'll exit out of here, exit, exit. And just to double check, we'll run a show VLAN brief command. As you can see, we have our new VLAN 10. Now, if we go back to our second switch, if everything has worked, then we should have synced our VLAN databases. So we'll run a show VLAN brief command on this switch. As you can see, our databases have now synced and we now have VLAN 10 on the second switch. If we run the show VTP status command again, we can see the revision number has increased when we added our new VLAN. So that's it. VTP is configured and everything is working. We created the VLAN on the first switch and the second switch synced and created it for us. Now, while we're here, if you remember, I said that switches in client mode cannot create VLANs. They can only sync from server switches. Just to show you, if we enter the configure terminal and we try to add another VLAN, we get a message saying configuration is not allowed on client switches. This can be useful if you have a large number of switches. You can set a majority of them as clients and then a select few as servers. That way it's a lot easier to manage and you can even restrict access to the server switches so people can't start creating and deleting VLANs. That's it for VTP, a great little feature, but be careful if you choose to use it. VTP can save you hours and hours of work but at the same time can completely remove network access, which in turn will probably cause you hours and hours of work. If you like this video, remember to comment, like, and subscribe. If the great feedback from you keeps coming, so will these videos. Thank you for watching.